What is up guys? I'm Daddy Gamer Fred and welcome back to another Pokemon News Daily, a daily Pokemon show where I go over Pokemon news spamming across all of the Pokemon games, including Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Pokemon Quest, Pokemon Go, and of course Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee Games. Today is June 16th, 2018, and if you play Pokemon Go, happy Pokemon Go Community Day. Just to get this out of the way, Shiny Lavatar has been confirmed to appear in the game. Obviously, I was lucky enough to grab two of these bad boys which i evolved one into tyranitar and does have that move smackdown i seen a lot of people on twitter catching upwards to like 15 so that that's amazing and that's a thing so let me know how much you have caught in the comment section below if you got a shiny if you didn't get a shiny and of course your overall pokemon go community day experience for the month of june and while we on the topic of pokemon go niantic took it a Upon themselves today to drop a news dump of information about upcoming events the safari zone event about about pokemon go fest and another safari zone event later on in the summer again they released a huge blog post about it i'm gonna just run through it as quickly as possible so let's just dive right into it global research pokemon sightings and more coming during pokemon go's summer tour 2018 as all trainers from all over the world participate in live events during Pokemon Go Summer Tour 2018, we are happy to bring amazing in-game opportunities for trainers everywhere. Take a look at some of our exciting things coming up in our calendar. First things first is Professor Willow's Global Challenge. Professor Willow needs your help. On the weekends of our special live event, trainers from all over the world will be tasked to complete Professor Willow's Global Challenge. The challenge is simple complete field research tasks. For the purpose of this challenge, the global community will be split into four parts, the Americas, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, and the Asian Pacific region, and the main research site itself. Each area will have to complete a set number of field research tasks, and if the goals are met, trainers everywhere will be able to enjoy some amazing bonuses. There will be three opportunities to complete field research research goals throughout the summer so get ready to work together at the end of each event if all the goals are met for each area an even bigger bonus will be unlocked so stay tuned for more information on this exciting reward we will let the professor explain it in his own words so this is the professor talking from his words exactly it says thank you so much for your help in gathering important field research your amazing contribution has has already furthered my work and I have a feeling that at the end of this challenge something amazing will happen. I wonder what it could be. I put together this handy chart to help you track your progress. Best of luck trainers. I hope you enjoy my challenge. I can't wait to see what you find. Time to get up and go. Professor Willow. Thanks, Professor. Trainers, we can't wait to see you out in the field. Get ready to do some research. And the first wave of that event is the first Safari Zone. It says the first event in Professor Willow's research challenge will occur in Germany during the Safari Zone event. While there's plenty to do in the Germany area during the free event, such as encountering unknown Kosala throughout the beautiful West Fallen Park and exciting raid battles are going to be happening around the city. Trainers worldwide will also be able to join in on the fun. In addition to completing field research tasks provided by Professor Willow, trainers all over the world will see an increased appearances of grass and poison type Pokemon originally discovered in the Hoenn region. Perhaps you have a chance of catching a shiny Rosalina sprouting purple flowers. So that's hype. You got Shiny Rosalina coming to the game. So mark your calendars for June 30th and July 1st to take advantage of this cool celebration. Celebrate Pokemon Go Fest around the world. Pokemon Go Fest 2018 on July 14th and July 15th will be the next stop for the fun. Trainers without a ticket to the event won't be able to see any Pokemon or Pokestops in the park, but Trampus, Feebas, and other Pokemon featured in 
the habitats of Pokemon Go Fest will appear more frequently all over the world during that weekend. The cheering Pokemon Post and Minion, I'm probably saying that wrong, will also appear more frequently worldwide as trainers complete their theme field research tasks. Catching them will result in bonus Stardust and Lucky Trainers might even discover their shiny variants. Now, again, two more shiny Pokemon confirmed coming to Pokemon Go. The low in forms of Diglett and Geodude will be in on the fun too. So Alolan Diglett, Alolan Ductrio, Alolan Geodude, Alolan Graveler, Alolan Golem are all coming to Pokemon Go this summer. Don't miss the chance to encounter these unique forms of these Pokemon. There will be so much to do the weekend of Pokemon Go Fest, you do not want to miss it. Even more awaits. Trainers, even more surprises are coming. Keep your eye out for news as we get closer to each event and stay tuned as we continue to announce late summer events and more. So get out there and go. Now my god, that was a mouthful of news. Obviously the big takeaways is shiny Rosalina, shiny Postal Minos, I'm probably saying those names wrong, but we got those shinies, as well as the low informs for Diglett and Geodude, the whole family is going to be here in Pokemon Go, which again, is pretty cool. Do remember, you do want to catch a couple of extra Alolan forms because we don't know how long they will actually stay in the game. Alolan Executor popped up first, and I haven't spotted one ever since like that initial wave of Executor's left i haven't spotted an executor and uh, correct me if i'm wrong i don't know if it's still in the game it's probably still in the game it's probably just extremely rare so you do want to make sure you have a couple of them with you in your party at all times and especially because of the fact that you can transfer them over to pokemon let's go pikachu and let's go eevee and it's unconfirmed yet if those pokemon will be catchable in those alone forms inside of the game without moving them from pokemon go to let's go but again just to be safe, make sure you have extras to send over it to those games. And talking about Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, on the official Pokemon Twitter today, they posted up screenshots about something very particular about the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games that they brushed over during the Nintendo Treehouse event about candies being a focus in a way that you can increase a Pokemon's EVs and IVs in the game. And I say EVs and IV loosely, I'm probably wrong on that, correct me in the comments, but they basically strengthen your Pokemon. Kind of like what they do in Pokemon Go, but Pokemon Go is kind of a general sense of it because in the Let's Go games, what's different is that there's a whole bunch of different type of candy while in the pokemon go there's only candy for particular pokemon so when you use a candy on a rat attack for example it would just make the cp of that pokemon grow in the let's go games how they different if you use a quick candy for example it will increase the speed of that pokemon not just making it stronger but yeah it's making it stronger because it's making that quick attack it's making that quick status higher but again you get to choose which ones you want to like beef up if you want a pokemon defense up there's a candy for that if you want a pokemon strength up there's a candy for that special defense so on and so on now all the candy in the game is going to be stored in a i believe an item slot or a bag inventory space called the candy jar and the tweet goes as follows the candy jar is a unique training system that will be introduced in pokemon let's go pikachu and let's go ev games you will use a variety of candy to strengthen your Pokemon. And just like in the Pokemon Go games, in order to get the candy, you have to catch multiple of that same Pokemon and then send the repeated Pokemon, the ones that you don't want, to Professor Oak, not Professor Willow this time. Now, this does kind of make sense that this is implemented in the Let's Go games because you're going to be catching repeated Pokemon to level up your Pokemon because there's no wild battle. So you're going to be catching a ton of Pokemon. And I kind of, that's, that's kind of give or take a good thing because again, you do want to catch a ton of Pokemon to see, you know, so you can have the strongest Pidgey, for example. You want that. But I just, I don't know. I have to play the game myself to kind of give the feel if it's going to be annoying or you know or is it gonna feel right at home but as of right now i cannot say either way 
What I can say is that it kind of does work in Pokemon Go. And it's kind of a nuisance that, you know, I am catching, like today, a ton of Lavatar. Every time I seen a Lavatar, I caught it. So I, it, it is kind of repetitive as far as just catching a Pokemon over and over, but I could kind of see how that can work and translate into you know leveling up Pokemon as well as getting farming candies for Pokemon now this first screenshot is kind of interesting because as you can see this person has caught 718 Pokemon and that is ridiculous thinking on that is only 150 in the game so this person has probably spent a lot of time grinding and just to think that there was 718 Pokemon caught hopefully we don't have a box issue <laughs> with the games but Jesus Christ I wonder how the PC is gonna work I know they said the PC is not like the traditional PC you always have it on you you can always have access to it I do wonder how that's gonna play into the core gameplay of it how much can we use it how much can we abuse it can we throw Pokemon in the PC that's fainted and pull out different Pokemon because if we are doing stuff like you know the slip coat tower and hell even the elite four if you are able to just you know switch a pokemon midst the elite four that's kind of gonna break the game kind of but I, again i don't want to just draw conclusions and make predictions on what how that actually works because who knows maybe they will block it off in areas like that in the game to encourage you to do seek out those pokemon centers and to use items so we do get a screenshot image of multiple candies in the game not just the quick candies we got health candies mighty candy tough candy smart candy courage candy and again quick candy what's very interesting is that underneath the pokemon you can see like this like a little yellow bar and it's like hey you know pikachu needs one and i wonder if it's saying that it needs one because it could particularly use one like if the pokemon is a great attacker you should be feeding it candies to increase his attack if that makes any sense i hope it's that i'm not too sure about that but that's what it kind of to me anyway is looking like it's aiming to and again i kind of love this because this again introduces people who are like me like noobs not too fond about how you know golden bottle caps and you know making sure pokemon's evs and ivs are well trained for the post game and stuff like that this is a great way to kind of simplify it as well as making it very precise on how to grow each pokemon stat now that's going to do it for today for pokemon news daily please let me know in the comment section below what do you think about this candy jar and how candies are going to make their way into a main series Pokemon games? Well, at least into these Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games. And would you like a feature like this to be included in the core RPG games that are coming in 2019? I know a lot of people are worried and wondering if we are going to get all these Go features in the main series Pokemon game in 2019. I say yes. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think it's a safe bet to see that these are going to be included to bring those Pokemon fans who do enjoy Go over, but then I do think there's going to be an option to battle wild Pokemon and not be so hand-holdy as these games look like they kind of aiming are. So let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section below. Like always, guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred on Instagram and Twitter, and you guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American Gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube, and yes, I'm going to be doing a ton of these Pokemon news daily videos. The best way to catch them all is is with a subscription so please hit that subscribe button also hit the like button it does help me out a ton as far as growing the channel is concerned ring the bell if you want to be notified on the next time i drop a video peace i'm gonna see you guys on the next pokemon news daily